tonight. Debris from a U.S. Patriot missile raining down on a street in Kyiv. The stunning video proving that the most sophisticated air defense system in the world was used to stop Russia when it fired 11 cruise and ballistic missiles at the Ukrainian capital this week. This comes as Yevgeny Prigozhin, the head of the Russian private army, the Wagner Group, lashed out in a response to a question from CNN about whether he would be holding a press conference in Russia. We are getting ready for a long, hard war. The first message to CNN is that you have to respect Russia. Now, Prigozhin went on to issue a violent threat, violent and graphic threat. Certainly not the first time that Prigozhin has lashed out, of course, under pressure. The war he is fighting has caused that pressure, right, making its way deeper into Russian territory. Drone and artillery attacks inside the country are on the rise, so much that Vladimir Putin's top propagandist is now saying that nuclear weapons should be used to destroy Elon Musk's Starlink satellites, which is the crucial technology that Ukraine uh, is believed to use to launch drone strikes. I think it's time to turn up the heat. We understand that all drones and everything else works for Americans only while Starlink exists. So, if we carefully launch our nukes into space, then there will be no Starlink left. Sam Kiley is out front. Ukraine's not claiming responsibility for these attacks inside Russia. But if Kiev gets blamed, that's just fine. There's more to come. The number of incidents is constantly increasing, not only in the border areas, but also in the depths of Russia. It's already happening. The scale will be exponential. Here, an oil refinery in Russia's far south is set aflame, while along Ukraine's northern border with its invader, civilian areas are hit by shelling. Apartments riddled with shrapnel, commonplace in Ukraine, a new experience for Russians. Ukraine's new strategy is taking shape inside Russia. Drone and artillery attacks have hit Russian targets in an arc along its Ukrainian border provinces of Bryansk, Kursk, Belgorod, Voronze and Krasnodar. And Moscow's not been spared either. On the deck of a Royal Navy warship, key Ukrainian ally, the United Kingdom, gave Kyiv a green light to attack Russia. Legitimate military targets beyond its own border are part of Ukraine's self-defense. Um, and we should, recognize, uh, we should recognize that. In response, former Russian president and close Putin ally Dmitry Medvedev claimed on Twitter that as the UK is in an undeclared war against Russia, any British official could be considered as a legitimate military target. Now that would be an escalation even Vladimir Putin might resist. Now, uh, Aaron, you mentioned uh, the use of nuclear weapons against uh, Starlink satellites there. That would be, I think, technically impossible. I have to say also, locally, they're not used by uh, drones, certainly not drones that could strike as deep into Russia right. as Moscow. Uh, but this, I think, should be seen, what we're seeing in Russia, as a completely new phase of the Ukrainian uh, strategy. This could be effectively what we've all been talking about, which is the beginning of their counteroffensive. They're launching it, and they're launching it in Russia. Erin? Oh, it's just, and, and, and so well said. All right, Sam, thank you very much. On the ground in Ukraine tonight. And out front now, I want to go to Andrei Soldatov, a Russian investigative journalist. His latest article details the Kremlin's panic over the increasing number of anti-Putin Russian exiles living abroad. So, Andrei, I want to play more from Prigozhin who told CNN that he and his allies speak directly to the Russian people because he says Russian state media is trying to hide the true reality of the war. Let me play another brief clip here for you. We discuss how to best convey an honest agenda to the Russian Federation population about what is happening, so as on the one hand, not to sow panic, and on the other hand, to mobilize society and not to mollify it, as some, including the federal media, are currently doing. Andre, what do you think he is doing here? Well, first of all, uh, we all understand that uh, Prigozhin uh, already has his media empire 
he has his troll factories, uh, he is recording his uh, videos almost on a daily basis. Uh, so obviously he has no communication problems. So it is about something else. And I suspect that he is sensing that Vladimir Putin, uh, well, very soon will have no choice but to start preparing the country uh, to enter in, into the next stage uh, to switch uh, to the war mode. And for that, uh, there would be a substantial effort, uh, including mobilization and tightening the rules. And it's quite obvious that Prigozhin wants to be part of his uh, effort. And he is, uh, he does have his own ideas, for instance, to mobilize elites by sending their kids to the battlefield. So he's, uh, he's very resourceful. So in your new article, you talk about a growing number of anti-Putin Russian exiles and that the Kremlin uh, is, is very afraid of this and has been attempting to stoke a paranoia among them, perhaps of what's, you know, killing them or poisonings or who know what it, what it may be. Um, but that the Kremlin has this worry of enemies plotting abroad. What more are you learning? Well, they see that uh, there, is, there is a combination of things. Uh, first of all, these uh, attacks on Moscow has a huge, uh, profound uh, psychological effect yeah. on Moscovites and on the Russian elites. Everybody immediately remembered that uh, 23 years ago, uh, well, uh, what helped Vladimir Putin to become president uh, was fear uh, felt by many Moscovites, because back then, and I remember that vividly, uh, there was a series of attack on civilians in Moscow. So Putin promised the Russians, uh, well, to protect them. And that is why so many Russians decided to sacrifice their liberties, civil liberties, uh, in exchange for this protection. And now there is no protection and there is no liberties. And everybody understands that, including the Kremlin. That is why they're getting paranoid and we're here uh, reports about more poisonings and uh, more attacks uh, on Russian uh, political opposition uh, in exile. 